33 goddamn degrees. I sound like my dad. 33 goddamn degrees. Uh, man. Uh, the fucking Metallicathon, you guys. I really want to gush because it was. I'm so proud of how I did it, you know? I talked about it on the talk practice yesterday a little bit. So if you watch that, I'm going to kind of just rehash some of it, but only a few people watch that. So uh, probably only, if, maybe knows who, maybe only a few people watch this. But man, I got to fucking tell you. Trying to take it from a radio or regional, you know, Northern Michigan uh, broadcast, market 151 <laughs> in the Nielsen ratings, you know. Uh, which, you know, is not a knock. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter because it's a small area. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. Nobody said that. It was a fucking, uh, a pretty big deal whenever it happened. A lot of fucking people tuned in, you know. And when I left radio, I was like, you know, I don't want to do fucking radio shit anymore. But then... <sighs> Because before Metallica dropped news of the new album, I had actually, I, I, I think I had just brought, popped into my head Metallica thought, And I'm like, why would I do that? No fucking way. Then uh, the new album hit and the brain baby just started seeping in. And I fucking, I don't, over the course of a few weeks, I want to say, I really talked myself into it. And just trying to figure out how to bring that sort of thing to YouTube and present it in a cool fucking way, you know, and I did tests, <laughs> like a six hour test, I want to say, it could have been, I, it might not have been a six hour, it could have been three, where I, you know, just played a bunch of Metallica on an unlisted YouTube live video and just see how it went, and it was fucking totally cool, man, didn't get blocked or anything, but, you know, I didn't really do videos, and that's what got me on this Metallica-thon, but I gotta tell you, because it did get blocked a few times. It, you know, I think a lot of people would say that that, you know, uh, maybe not say that it didn't work or it was a failure because it got blocked. And I know I lost a bunch of viewers, uh, but I still had a bunch of viewers through the whole thing. So the, yet the idea that that was the only fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've really, my journey doing this podcast has been learning the technical side of it, uh, uh, getting over uh, mental hurdles while doing live streams because I would get super nervous. And whenever something would fuck up, I would just be like, fuck it and just kill it and then just hate myself. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, but now, because of the talk practice and all of the prep that I put into uh, the Metallicathon, uh, being comfortable finally to kind of just do what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Get the things out. And when the fuck ups happened, you know, on the live stream, again, normally I'd be like, fuck this. And it was just like, oh, this is cool. We, we just roll on and we just present it a little bit differently i had to drop the video portion of it you know because it's not that it got blocked necessarily it's like weird man a couple like tracks specifically like uh metallica at the bridge school benefit and then the cover of ecstasy of gold got blocked specifically and actually blocked that video now youtube will block live streams and just kill them if they think there's a copyright issue uh, playing a video triggers that copyright block, but then allows people to see it when they don't block it, but it still kills the live stream. I didn't really realize that, th that at the time. So from that aspect, uh, it was such a fucking educational thing. And I mean that a hundred percent, man, I am taking nothing but a win out of this fucking Metallica thon, man. Uh, I learned so much on what I could do on a live stream, what I can't do on a live stream. Uh, then just the fucking aspect that I was so fucking prepared and pulled it off. You know, I had people hanging out in Scotland for the whole thing. I had 
uh, I think, local friends that were radio listeners and kind of fucking said, dude, this Metallicathon podcast is by far... Maybe they, didn't use, maybe they didn't use the word by far. I could have embellished that. <laughs> the fish story I talked about on Talk Practice yesterday. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger over time. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe not by far, but they said, dude, this podcast is better, way better <laughs> than the, ra- the radio version. You know what I mean? And that's it's nothing against the radio. But it's just, you know, it's a different medium and you can do so many more things and the visual aspect is super fucking cool. Having Brother Levi in was super fucking fun, man. It has been over a goddamn year, I think, since uh, we did a podcast together. We started the podcast together, you know, and then it's just it just became me doing it. Uh, and it's always fucking awesome when I can get him on, man. It's, uh, uh, and for 12 goddamn hours, he brought food over. (laughs) He made this, uh, what the fuck was it? Huevos Rancheros casserole, which was out of this fucking world. Had some pizza. I drank some fucking beer. Got super fucking high. And had a goddamn blast, man, hanging out with people. And the album reaction to 72 Seasons. Uh, is now available in full if you were watching the live stream. Bless your fucking heart. And it got blocked and you didn't catch it back up. It is now in full. And I got to say, the more I'm sitting with that album, the more I kind of dig it, man. It's different. It's super different for Metallica. And I like the different shit, man. Some of it is still kind of awkward for me, but there's way more cool different shit to kind of pick apart than the stuff that makes me go, I don't know if I like that, you know. So I fucking like that shit. I fucking like that shit. You know what I also like, but I probably shouldn't? <laughs> what the hell? Everything!